So, you want to save the world with clean energy? Make money doing it? Confused about the economic and technical realities of residential and commercial solar, batteries, heat pumps, EVs? Want the real world scoop on new energy technologies, not manufacture hype? Then tune in to the Weekly Energy Show, hosted by Barry Cinnamon. Insights from Barry's 40 plus years in the solar and energy industry will help you understand the future ways we'll generate and consume energy. And now, here's Barry. Irreverent, over the top, and smart as a whip. This is The Rob Black Show. Today, a special episode. We're going to talk about solar power, maybe a little solar power investments will drip in. We'll talk about, is it appropriate for you? When should you jump in? If you haven't, I have. I'm happy to say that. It's a really interesting and fun and learning experience. It's massively changed my consumption of energy. And I kind of wish I was taught this in high school. So let's bring in Barry Cinnamon from Cinnamon Energy Systems. He is the CEO of the company. He is the man responsible for getting solar on my roof. How are you, Mr. Cinnamon? I'm doing great, Rob. Sunny day and uh, things couldn't be better. Interesting that you say it's a sunny day. I'm sure that that bleeds into your industry a little bit more often. Um, solar power is natural energy. It's the sun. It's producing electricity. It's, it's the solar cells capture certain wavelengths and solar radiation and convert them to electricity of our homes. That's about as much as I know. So you're going to be educating me and the audience today. Let's go through the history of solar maybe real quick. I think it was invented by a, a Bell Laboratories person many, many years ago. And how has it evolved and where do we stand right now? Yeah, exactly. It started in Bell Labs in New Jersey. Um, they, they uh, actually Albert Einstein got his first Nobel Prize on learning about figuring out the photo photoelectric effect. Started in New Jersey, and then they figured out ways to make the solar cells cheaper and cheaper. They first used them on satellites to power the satellites, and then b- back in this, the the seventies and eighties, they started finding ways to make them cheap enough so you can actually put them on a roof. But still, when you were looking at 30, 40, 50 year paybacks. But what really changed about 15, 20 years ago is several states, including California, started putting in big incentives. That drove the volume up for purchases. More and more factories started making solar cells and solar panels. The price started coming down. And starting at about 10 years ago, the transition from um, solar being the cheapest source of energy really started to take effect. And right now, without a doubt, the solar is the cheapest way to make kilowatt hour electricity anywhere in the world. So let's talk about that. You said the prices have come down. I think the research that I did is about 80% in the last 10 years is probably more than that. Now the technology is growing on the panels. The batteries uh, seems to be where the breakthroughs are going the fastest, the storage batteries. What goes into a solar system at this point? What do we need to know? So, okay, so so the the first thing you need to know is that obviously you need a sunny roof or you know utility scale in the desert, plenty of sun there. You you mount the solar panels on the roof or in a field, field for the utilities. The solar panels generate DC power just like a battery. Then you have a box called an inverter, and that inverter converts the DC power into the AC power that all of our appliances and all of our uh, items in the house use. So that that goes directly into your house. Any excess solar that you produce so on a sunny day, you're going to produce more solar power than your house uses. The excess goes backwards through your electric meter and the numbers on the meter go down. So it's kind of like an accounting system instead of a storage system. But what, as you mentioned, what's changed over the past five years is lithium ion batteries starting in cars, but now being used for stationary purposes for, for homes and businesses are now being used to soak up that excess solar power during the day. So instead of sending it back to the utility, you can now save your own solar in your own battery. And why would you want to do that? The reason why you want to do that is because the electric rates at night are the highest. And obviously, you're not going to generate any, any solar power during the day, but you can use the energy that you've you've generated on your roof and storing your battery during the day, and then you can use that at night and you can save some additional money. Plus, we got a lot of blackouts, and the blackouts are something that are easily addressed with a battery backup system. So I have a, a battery backup system and I got the solar on my roof. Your people came out. They're incredibly professional. Um, they did the measurements, uh, did the math, did the science. 
figured out where on the roof he could fit. And I guess they have to face a little bit to the South or something like that for maximum power or absorption or something. Um, what's been fun about it is my bills are going down <laughs> to the point that like on some days I feel like I'm getting completely free energy. And for a financial nerd, that's really, really makes me happy. And it's just looking at the math of it. Um, <clears throat> What percentage of people would you say? Not, I don't know. We need exact percentages, but how many people would benefit from considering solar? Because our cost of electricity is going up every year. I remember when I was twenty, like I'd get out an eighty dollar bill, but now that I'm fifty, I'm getting eight hundred dollar bills. Keep in mind, I have a hot tub and a pool. So uh, basically, any any homeowner with a sunny roof in the country can benefit from solar. What's also interesting is you benefit the most in areas where electricity prices are highest. Okay. So we're you know, California, Hawaii, New York, New Jersey, highest electricity prices. You kind of generate about the same amount of sun across the country, depending on your latitude. But if you're able to offset those really high prices, it's best. So here in California, I'm just kind of looking at a sample, a pretty easy to install system. But we like to talk in, in terms of paybacks. Um, and, and a system, typical system right now, the payback is five or six years. A five-year payback is equivalent to a 20% rate of return on your investment. Um, and and that's, that's like ridiculously great. And that's not even including the effects of inflation. So basically, anybody with a sunny roof can benefit from solar in most sunny states. I'm speaking to CEO Barry Cinnamon from Cinnamon Energy Systems. You also have a podcast. If people are really geeking out on solar, where we, can we find that? Well, you, you can get our podcast at www.cinnamon.energy. We don't have a .com. It's just .energy. And it's called The Energy Show. Mm -hmm. And I, I cover not only solar, but I cover all, all aspects of, of energy. But one of the last shows I did was the rising costs of energy in California. I did another one recently on heat pumps because people are putting in heat pumps like crazy. Um, I, I did a show trying to explain why, even though the U.S. is, is almost a net producer of, of, foss, of fossil fuels, of, of gasoline, of oil, that our gas prices go up because th these energy items, gas, natural gas, mm -hmm. it's a worldwide commodity. And you know what happens in Europe affects what, our, what the price of the pump is for us here in the US. So you just brought up something very vague to me. He people are installing heat pumps like crazy. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Because I get money, you get energy. Heat pumps are, are terrific. And, and the reason why it's a good thing is they can, they have an efficiency of 300%. Now, th according to thermodynamics, you can't have an efficiency of more than 100. But what a heat pump does is it literally moves heat from the outside to the inside. So on a cool day where you may need to be heating up your house, the heat pump will take more heat out of that cool air. It's kind of a mad, black magic. And it puts it into the house. And the exhaust from the heat pump is even colder air. So heat pump heating system works great. And what's even hotter, literally, is a heat pump water heater where you replace that tank that you have in your garage or your basement with a tank that looks exactly the same. It, and it uses electricity to move heat from the garage or the basement into your hot water. And God, I look at my hot water heating bill. It's like five or six dollars a month. It's, it's fantastic. Good to hear. The first law of thermodynamics is a version of the law of conservation of energy. That's all I remember from high school. I'm speaking with Barry Cinnamon. I think there's three laws of thermodynamics. And I can only remember one. Speaking with Barry Cinnamon, we're going to take a quick break here. You can find him at cinnamon.energy. It's not a .com. It's cinnamon.energy. I used him to install my system. Great man. Great team that comes out and helps. Um, I highly endorse the, the process. We'll take a break here. We'll be right back. It's Rob Black. Rob Black and your money. Find me at robblackshow.com. The fortune-making spirit of today's marketplace, The Rob Black Show. Let's talk a little bit about PG&E, Barry. Um, the one thing I can say about PG&E is that I do see that constant, you know, start on the lower left, move to the upper right on, on cost for me. And it feels like electricity is getting more and more expensive, even though we're getting better and better producing it. What's your thoughts on PG&E? Well, my, my basic thoughts on PG&E is it's a profit-making corporation. They are profitable, even though they go through bouts of bankruptcy. And um, they're, they're trying to do a job of, of 
generating as much profit as possible and providing electricity. I have a lot of respect for everybody at PG&E that wears a tool belt and you know is climbing up those utility poles. But um, I, I have a lot of um, bouts and fights with with anybody at PG&E that's wearing a tie, because the the solar that people put on the roof, the solar that businesses put on their their roof, directly competes with the energy that PG&E sells. So it's just a it's a it's a technology change that's happening where it's actually cheaper for you to put an energy generating and an energy storage system on your roof, really cheaper than for the utility to do it with all the profit and the overhead they have. So overall thoughts of PG&E, um, I've got a big target on my back. I'm one of their biggest um, <laughs> competitors, and uh, but they're they're trying to provide electricity for the state. They have an enormous amount of political clout. That's why they're able to continue to raise rates. And I was just kind of looking back over the 20 plus years that I've been putting solar in here in California. Um, for From 2000 to 2015, rates went up at 3%. From 2016 to 2020, rates went up at 6%. Over the last two years, Rob, rates have gone up at 28% for the last two years. That's 14%. And with inflation, we're in an environment where it, there's kind of no doubt in my mind, other experts, that electricity rates are going to continue to go up at 10% a year. That's flabbergasting. So mathematically, last year when I made the decision, basically I had a previous home that was good for solar, but not great. And I got a new home that's really okay for solar, pretty good for solar. That was a mathematical, that was a good investment idea for me because especially in a year right before a correction, I used some of my cash instead of putting it in the market, I used some of my cash to get a solar system. Um, and I'm already starting to see the mathematics of it, but even more importantly, I'm helping my kids see the mathematics of it uh, because I think it's going to be tougher and tougher. Now you brought up um, politics and politicians. We know pg e is well represented in Sacramento and well represented in Washington, DC. How is the solar energy represented? I know you've testified in both areas. So the solar industry um, in California is represented by a, a, an organization called the California Solar and Storage Association. And, and you know, I'm a, a kind of a, a longtime member and, and a board member over there. But it's basically uh, the, Goli- the Davids of the little solar industry competing against the Goliaths in California of the incumbent utility, Southern California Edison, San Diego Gas and Electric, and PG&E. And um, we're fighting all the time. Right now, we're in the middle of a fight over net metering. And the utilities want to change the economic picture that, that, that is in place where they're going to give you fewer credits when you sell power back to them. So they want, they, they want to minimize that. They even want to eliminate it. So big fight. We've got a demonstration coming up soon in, in, in San Francisco. But the interesting thing about it, Rob, is technology is kind of staying ahead of what the utilities are trying to do. So now, even if they were to give you a zero credit for electricity you sell back, you're just gonna put in another battery. And so you put the solar on your roof, and even if you're not connected to the grid all the time, you'll still be saving money. Let's talk a little about selling back credits because I'm producing more energy most days, not every day. Most days that I don't charge my Tesla, I'm producing more energy than I'm consuming. I am able to sell that back and I monitor it. So I'm trying to get as much sold back to PG&E between 4 p.m. and 9 p.m. when it's most expensive. I, what I'm learning is it's too confusing for me. On the PG&E bill, there's line rates. There's, you know, I'm renting a line from them. Talk a little bit about that process and maybe calm me down a little bit because I feel crazy looking at my PG&E bill. Rob, I've been doing this for over 20 years here and the bill's flat, completely confusing to me too. They keep changing the numbers. So, um, and, and you got to remember every utility does the billing differently. There's 3,500 utilities in the country, mm-hmm. but fundamentally what happens is if, if your electric rate is say 40 cents a kilowatt hour and you're selling power back to the utility, back to pg e right now, you're getting a credit of about 37 or 38 cents. So they keep a, a few pennies just for, Actually, ironically, the, the amount that they keep is, is going to pay back their previous bankruptcies. But um, what they want to do is they want to change that, that sellback rate from 95% of the retail rate at which they sell to you. They want to change that to 5%. And that's, that would really, really negatively affect all new solar customers. Existing solar customers are grandfathered for 15 to 20 more years. But that's the way it is. And it changes. They change the bills every, every single year. It's extremely complicated. Plus the rates. The one thing you can count on 
is the rates will keep going up. Let's talk about that when we come off of break again. The annual home energy cost, it's going up at a regular uh, consistent level. I feel that there's tax credits that need to be explained a little bit more. There's discounts that you can get, rebates and coupons. I'm going to ask you for some resources. I'm going to ask you when we come back for advice on how to electrify your home because I've done it and I feel very comfortable with it. You can find Barry Cinnamon. He's the CEO of Cinnamon Energy Systems at www.cinnamon.energy. There's no .com. Once again, it's www.cinnamon.energy. Real good guy. And he's he's fascinating to talk to. If you can buy him a beer over a weekend, buy him too, because he'll chat you up on the topic. <laughs> I'm Rob Black. We'll take a break here. Come back with Barry Cinnamon from Cinnamon Solar Energy. A straightforward approach to managing your money. The Rob Black Show. A couple of years ago, I feel like I was a little confused with do you rent a system? Do you lease a system? Do you buy a system? Um, is the system getting better every year? Should I wait two or three more years? And finally, I took the jump and I feel very good about it. A lot of incentive programs. Let's talk in this segment about just where we are. Rates are going up, Barry. We know that. Natural gas prices are likely to continue to go up with the war in Ukraine and America shifting natural gas from our side of the Atlantic, the Europe side of the Atlantic to counter set what you Russia is doing in uh, the European region. What are the positives? What are the negatives on where we are? Well, the, the, the only negative is the fact that, that electricity and gas and gasoline are going to keep going up. But the positive is that solar keeps gradually getting more efficient. Um, the costs for solar are gradually going up. But bizarrely, because the energy prices are going up faster, we keep seeing paybacks getting shorter and shorter. So, the, the, But the biggest negative about solar and batteries is it's expensive up front. So there's two things that, that businesses and homeowners can do to offset those high costs. The first is that there's a, a big tax credit from the federal government. It's, it's still in place. It's called the Solar Investment Tax Credit. It applies to solar, it applies to batteries, and it applies to any upgrades you need to make on your electrical system or your roof to accommodate the system. The second thing is that there are also rebates in many, many locations for heat pumps, and there are going to be rebates for EV chargers, just as there are rebates for electric vehicles. So you'll have to check with your local suppliers and see exactly what kind of rebates are available. So that kind of helps reduce the upfront cost, but you're still going to have an upfront cost. So the solution to that are a variety of different techniques to fi finance your solar system. The most cost effective is usually a home equity loan, or we're, we're pretty much whenever people want financing from our company, we're using a local credit union. It's a, they're basically nonprofits. It's dirt cheap money. It's like two and a half percent. And you, know, you compare that to 8% inflation, it's great. But some people may not qualify that or may not have access to it. So there are other specialized solar loans that are a little bit more money than the the, um, uh, the the credit unions. And then there are also programs like solar leases, which for some people make sense. But all of those financing techniques mean that you don't have to lay out the, the $30,000, $20,000, $50,000 for a big system amount for solar. You pay on a monthly basis. And in almost every single case, you're, you are cash flow positive every single month. In other words, when you look at your payment, the loan payment for the solar and the battery system, it's always, almost always less than what you were paying before for, for electricity. So I'm looking at my Solar Edge app. Solar Edge is a company. I'll let you talk a little bit about them right now. You've used panels from a different company. We'll talk about that integration in just a second, but I'm looking at my app and it's telling me that I'm getting 2.3 kilowatts right now. Nothing's coming from pg &E. It makes me happy. I've gotten so silly that I now, um, I refuse to do, use my dryer because that feels like it's a big drain from four o'clock to nine o'clock. And I, I, I don't yell at my kids, but kind of. And all my white towels, I'm now drying in the sun because it's solar energy for free um, and no installation cost, so to speak. Um, Let's talk a little bit about Solar Edge and uh, the breakthrough companies because you even installed a, an EV charger in my home. So I've charged my car for 280 miles in the last two days and none of it's hitting PG&E. None of it's hitting me in my pocket directly. It's indirectly from the installation costs. 
maybe a little bit on storage and like EV chargers that are even more efficient than the ones that are out there? Um, sure. Um, so SolarEdge is the biggest inverter company in the world. They make that box that turns the DC power from the solar panels on the roof or in the battery into AC power that you can use in your house and that you can sell back to the utility. Very big company. They're, they're profitable. They've, they've got um, for they're selling all over the world. There's a few other companies. Another one called Enphase is, is based in California. Tesla has, Tesla Energy has their, their own equipment. But, you know, these big companies, they do a lot. And it, it's, 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 a, it's a complicated system to make, to make it work with the app, to allow us to manage it. And Rob, you know, you were just mentioning, your, your, I can see the same performance of your system. Um, but they've done a really good job. Now, a caveat, I'm going to be completely candid with everybody. This stuff is a little complicated. There's a lot of pieces that we have to get working. And one of the surprises to me is that it's becoming more a software business than just a pure hardware business. So Solar Edge, Tesla, Enphase, those companies have done a really good job of integrating complicated hardware with what I would consider even more complicated software. But you've got an app on your phone, you've got an app on your computer, you can control when you're using the energy. And, and Rob, what's, what's the big op- biggest opportunity to you and you know, change your life a little bit is the fact that now you can see exactly when you're charging your car, when, you, when, when you're generating power, when you're not generating power. And that information just helps you save even more money on, on your energy. And it's not, just, it's not just your heating and your lights, but it's also your car because you're fueling your car from solar panels on the roof. When I made my decision a year ago, I bought a home. I remember working with you in radio and you left an impression of a wildly smart person and local. I also put a bit out with a big corporation across the United States based out of San Diego They came back with a bid and I also went with Tesla and Tesla was the worst experience of them all because you basically submit a hundred dollar down payment and they get back to you when they get back to you and it's all scheduled on apps and it was just a mess. Um, Talk, I'm endorsing the local angle. I'm endorsing the California angle guy who's put in hundreds and hundreds of systems in your neighborhood. Um, Is there anything you want to say about Tesla or big corporations versus the local installers? Um, I used to be a, a big national installer. This was a dozen years ago or so. And, okay. and one of the things that I found is that the bigger we got, the more overhead we accumulate. Different offices, layers of management, warehouses all over the place. And, and, and the costs go up. So my advice to people is if, if you want to work with a, a company that's going to be most efficient, that's going to give you the best customer service, that's headquartered you know, within a driving distance of your home, you want to get a local company. The big companies generally do a pretty good job. Tesla has got a lot of bureaucracy, and, and I think it's a little bit more challenging. But you've got a company like Sunrun. I know the people over there. I've known them forever. Um, they, they operate nationally, and, and they, do a, they do a very good job also. But my advice is work with a local company that's been in business a long time that has references, and they'll recommend the equipment that they have confidence in. Because there's uh, a lot of stuff out there that may not work as reliably, but um, I, I've been super happy with with Solar Edge. I've been very happy with LG. They make the batteries, and as far as the solar panels, it's kind of a commodity. But you want to pick solar panels that, that from a company that are going to really back up the warranty. And so that's that's the experience that comes from a local company that really is concerned about long term customer references. We get like seventy five percent of our business from references. We're not just out there with the cheapest price, but we, we try and provide the best service. And the reason I, one of the, one of the reasons or one of the benefits of going local is, you know, a lot of the roofers and there's kind of a cross pollination. People have to get up on your roof. I'd rather have you have the relationships with roofing people than say a national company is just going to subcontract it out. It's just a, it was a weird, peculiar father trait in me that I wanted to protect my family with a uh, more local angle who knows the subcontractors. We've got about two or three minutes. Is it worth talking about charging stations and uh, EVs and some of the investments that you see out there? Because I picked your brain on this and let's just say there's no shortage of thoughts in your head. Oh, yeah. The brain cells are getting, uh, they're, they're few and far between right now. But um, boy, you look at where people's biggest expenditures are. It's, it's, on, it's on gasoline. And so EVs are the, the way to go. But once you have an EV, uh, especially if it's not a Tesla, but even if it is a Tesla, 
you realize they're absolutely terrific for local travel. You might charge your car up two or three times a week. I do the same thing. I can drive a few hundred miles if I need to round trip. But the, the big challenge that the EV industry has is people driving a lot. You need to have filling stations. You need to have EV chargers kind of all over the place. And they're expensive. But what we're, what we're realizing is that the electrical, the electricity industry, the electrical generation industry, the utilities, they don't have the generating capacity or the distribution capacity to have those EV charging stations as ubiquitous as we have gas stations. So that that's going to be a big transition. But once you have an EV and, and Rob, you're going through the same thing. Once you start transitioning the, your house to full electrification, you you save money. It's great for the environment. It's a great lesson for the kids. And, uh, you know, it's kind of the way to go. So that's, that's going to be the trend. And, all, um, and, and f- a further thought, almost all new construction in California requires the installation of, of electric appliances, of heat pumps. So we're, we're kind of getting to the point where we're starting to discourage the use of natural gas in buildings. And that's going to further accelerate this clean energy transition. I know up in Tahoe that you can't build a home now with natural gas anymore. Over finished. They're not going to do it. Um, so I think the trend is your friend here. We've got about a minute. Is there any resource guide or website that you highly recommend so people can up their game? And before you get into that, I want to again say I'm speaking with CEO Barry Cinnamon for Cinnamon Energy Systems. You can find him at cinnamon.energy, www.cinnamon.energy, or contact me and I'll, I'll set you up with them. Any good resources for us out there? I'm going to be a little bit selfish here. I'm going to recommend Good. people go to our website because I've been doing podcasts for almost 10 years about energy. And a lot of the recent podcasts over the last few years are very timely in terms of educating people on a generic basis about inverters, about EV chargers, heat pumps, solar panels. So I would say go to our website, look at the topics on the podcast, and then find a local installer because we basically only work in the in the Bay Area. Sounds good. Thanks for joining me today. We'll have you back on again. As energy rates go up, more and more people are going to be contacting you. And I see that as a trend in energy. You can find him at www.cinnamon.energy. I'm Rob Black. Irreverent, over the top, and smart as a whip. This is The Rob Black Show. So, you want to save the world with clean energy? Make money doing it? Confused about the economic and technical realities of residential and commercial solar, batteries, heat pumps, EVs? Want the real-world scoop on new energy technologies, not manufacture hype? Then tune in to the Weekly Energy Show, hosted by Barry Cinnamon. Insights from Barry's 40-plus years in the solar and energy industry will help you understand the future ways we'll generate and consume energy. And now, here's Barry. Barry. 